Hi everyone, my name is Surush from the University of Illinois at Chicago. Welcome to my talk. This is a joint work with Panos Ilya and my advisor, Jason Porakis. Service worker is a powerful technology and there is a steady increase in the number of websites that adapt it. And service worker is a JavaScript code which is independent of the web application. It means that your browser might run the service worker even after you close the web application. And it uh, was introduced to fill the gap between native applications and web applications by providing features like push notification, background syncing, uh, cache storage for optimization of performance and providing offline mode for websites. Now let's start by understanding how these service workers are being used by different websites. To understand this, we created a customized browser. We actually modified the browser engine of Chromium to collect the information that we need from the service workers. What we modified are these five modules. These five modules implement the service worker in the Blink. We modified them to collect all the API calls that are related to the service workers and all the data that we need for our study. Using this customized browser, we analyzed top 1 million Alexa websites and we identified service workers on more than 30,000 websites. In this picture, you can see the rank of these websites with service workers. As you can see, the more popular ones are more likely to install a service worker. It happens because service workers uh, provide features that can help websites to have a better user experience. In this table, we can see the number of websites that use a, a specific feature of service worker. In this work, our focus is on caching and fetch functionality of service workers. Fetch API can convert a service worker to a client side proxy. It means that uh, all the outgoing requests from the web application can be intercepted by the service worker. And also the service worker has access to the cache storage of the website. So in this way, the website can control the caching behavior and also can provide offline pages when the user loses its connectivity. I have to mention that this cache storage is different from the traditional browser cache. Uh, the first difference is in the populating the cache. In the traditional browser cache, it happens during the navigation of websites. But in the cache storage, it is completely programmable. For example, this JavaScript code can create a cache and can uh, add a list of resources into the cache storage. The second difference is in the managing and maintaining the cached resources. The, in the traditional browser cache, it happens by a combination of browsers built in heuristics and some HTTP headers. But this is uh, under the control of developers in the cache storage. It means that those resources persist in the cache storage until the code, the JavaScript code, explicitly remove them. And there is no automated algorithm for checking the freshness of the resources that are stored in the cache. Each service worker has a, a scope. And if you open a page in that scope, the resources will go through the service worker. And if we uh, fetch the resource from a cross-origin website, it won't be served by the service worker. It will, it will be fetched from the server. But if we fetch the same URL using an iframe, it can bypass this limitation and it can be served by the service worker. It means that a third party website can activate the service worker and can get served from that. 
And if this third party website can infer that the iframe was actually served by a service worker, it can infer that this service worker has installed in this browser and this website is in the browsing history of the user. Now, I have to answer this question. How, how, how the third party website can infer that the iframe was actually served by the service worker and it is not being fetched from the network? We mentioned two different approaches to answer this question. The first one is based on an information leakage in the performance API. Performance API uh, provides some timing information about the different stages that a request has gone through. For example, when domain lookup start or when response start. And in the JavaScript, we can use this function to get those timing data uh, for any URL that we want. And the result will be something like this. Now let's assume two different browsers. In one browser, we have a service worker and we fetch the same URL in those two browsers. And then we want to compare the performance API of this URL that uh, is being fetched on those two browsers. This is the result of the performance API. Let's look at this closely. You can see here that the next hub protocol, this attribute is always an empty string when we have the service worker in the browser. And also the worker start is always zero when we don't have the service worker in the browser. So using these two different attributes, attacker can infer that the service worker has installed and can identify websites that the user has visited. The next question is that, can we make the process of finding these resources automated? Can we do that for a larger scale, uh, for a large number of websites? We actually used Selenium to launch our instrumented browser, and then we collected the intercepted request by fetch event listener, and also we collected the resources, the URLs that are stored in the cache storage of websites. And then we automatically test those URLs to find the suitable ones for our attacks. So the answer of this question is yes, if we can do that, we can create a website uh, to attack a large number of websites. And we also demonstrated a timing-based attack in the paper, and I'm going to skip this because of the time limitation. Then uh, we generated three additional attacks based on the history of sniffing attacks to show how severe is this issue. The first additional attack is a registration inference attack. Actually, we observed that websites insert additional resources after the user logged in into that service. So for this type of uh, websites, for this kind of behaviors, the attacker can infer the presence of these additional resources and can infer that the user actually has an account on that service. For example, Tinder and Gap are two websites that are vulnerable to this attack and attacker can infer that the user has account on those two services. The second additional attack is the group of application specific attacks. Uh, it means that depends on the source code of service worker and depends on the nature of resources that are stored in the cache storage, the attacker might be able to generate an, a specific attack for that specific website. For example, for WhatsApp, we were able to create uh, an, a specific attack which was able to infer the list of contacts of users because 
uh, what is being uh, stored in the cache storage of WhatsApp is the list of contacts of the user. And the third additional attack is a fine-grained information sniffing. We observe that some websites store additional resources when the user navigates different pages on that domain and also based on the different actions that the user has, it stores some additional resources. So then the attacker can infer those additional resources, the attacker can infer the user activity on that website. For example, Spokio.com is vulnerable to this attack. Spokio let users to search for different individuals and it stores the user search queries into the cache storage so attacker can infer whether the victim has searched for a specific individual or not. In this table you can see the list of vulnerable browsers. Safari was not vulnerable to this attack because it installs new service worker for iframes. We reported this problem to uh, the vulnerable browsers and Chromium fixed the information leakage in the performance API and they are working on the redesign of the site isolation for fixing the timing based attack but the timing based attack is still possible. Because this attack is still possible, we proposed a countermeasure. In this countermeasure, uh, we implement an access control mechanism inside the service workers to check the, the referrer of the intercepted request and based on that, uh, it can decide if the request can be served by the service worker or not. We also created a tool to help developer of different websites to implement this access control into their service workers. In summary, we conducted a larger scale measurement study on service workers. We found at least 30,000 websites currently use service workers. And we found um, service worker isolation issue in browsers and based on that we created two different history of sniffing attacks. To show how severe are these attacks, we created three additional privacy invasive attacks. And we also disclosed this finding uh, to the affected browser and Chromium is trying to redesign the site isolation problem to fix this attack. We also propose a countermeasure to, to prevent this attack. Thank you for joining my talk. Please uh, send me an email if you have any question.